Whether you realize it or not, Mayor Whitman, you're the cause of this, this bump on my head and this black eye. It's all your fault. All my fault? Yes. What are you driving at anyway? Well, I'd never got them if it hadn't been for that article of yours in the paper. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Good idea, if I do say so myself. <laughs> well, it wasn't for me. I tried it. When I accidentally blocked the way by stopping on the crosswalk, I didn't expect people to walk around. I got back where I belonged. I was considerate of pedestrians. I actually drove around puddles to avoid splashing them. But I was also considered by fellow motorists. When some fellow was trying to get across the line of traffic, I let him through. Courtesy was only a matter of a few seconds. I had time for it. I swung out of line so the car parallel to me wouldn't have to stop for a double parked car. When a driver nosed out ahead of the line at a stoplight, I didn't take the chance to smash him into the oncoming cars. I even treated the deliberately reckless driver courteously. And when some driver's motor had gone dead on him, and everybody was honking, loudly, impatiently. I sat quietly and waited. I knew it would do no good to blow my horn. Well, that's fine. Real, genuine courtesy behind the wheel. <laughs> well, it seems to me that that article of mine did a lot of good for you. But for the life of me, I can't figure out how you got a black eye out of it. You haven't heard the whole story. In my automobile, I was a model of courtesy and politeness. That's true enough. But I guess the strain was too great for me. When I actually went out into polite society, I didn't have any courtesy left. I was all mixed up, completely turned about. I behaved like the average motorist in a traffic jam. You mean, in society, you did the things that a driver normally does in his automobile? Well. That's what it was, all right. For after that, I went to the theater. Something happened to me the moment I set foot out of my car. It was just as though I swelled up inside with my own importance. Waiting in line, I was as restless as a driver held up by a traffic light. I treated a dear old lady as if she were a car trying to cut through the traffic. I was a regular bore. When someone bumped into me... I'm very sorry. Why don't you watch where you're going? I gave him a piece of my mind. When we were held up in the theater aisle because a lady had dropped her purse, I pushed through the crowd and protested loudly. Come on, come on, what's the holdup? Get going down there. And when a lady wanted me to get up so she could pass, I yelled out, Go on around the other way. Well, I guess I carried things a little too far. <clears throat> the ushers landed on me. But in my car again, I was courtesy itself. 
Oh, sorry, boy. I almost forgot your tip. Good evening, gentlemen. I was careful to give signals before I made turns. Even though other drivers threw their bright lights in my face, I turned on my passing lights. When someone in back of me failed to put on his brakes soon enough... Oh, that's quite all right. No harm done. Well, Mayor Whitman, that's my story. That's how I got the bump on my head and the black eye. And it's all on account of that idea of yours about taking society manners into the automobile. I still think it's a good idea. Well, I don't. What's going to happen to me if I keep on... <laughs> Nothing more serious than a bump on the head now and then. <laughs> yes, but it isn't natural. Discourtesy in polite society may shock people. But discourtesy behind the wheel of an automobile means real trouble. When all motorists learn to take their company manners with them into their automobiles, driving will be much more enjoyable and a lot safer. Boy, oh boy, what a nightmare.